Hi guys, it's Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're going to tear this engine apart and see what it looks like inside. Now taking it apart, we, anybody can do that. There are a few things I'll point out you really want to take notice of what it looks like when you take it apart. But the main importance is going to be internal. What's the rings look like? What's the bore look like? Uh, the valves and valve seats, are they in good shape? Uh, I guess let's just tear it apart and see what happens. Okay, we got the air breather unscrewed. We'll take that off. We got the cover unscrewed. We'll take that off. Okay, now we're going to take the cover off. Probably be pausing once in a while to get some tools because I have no idea what I need to get this thing apart. I've never been inside of one before. Well, we're going to need an impact. I can see that. I guess I'll go grab one. Okay, we got that big nut off there. Now we're just trying to get some of these little pieces off. This is just a fan that helps cool the engine. A lot of engines don't have that. Now we got to get this flywheel off of here. Now that's on a keyed shaft and it's tapered. So we got to get a puller on here to pull this off. I guess I'll go get one of my pullers. Okay, we got a center drill. First, I want to take this magneto off. I don't want anything to happen to it. There's a wire on here that usually just clips on. Take that off. That's your kill wire. That's what stalls your engine out. Put that off to the side. Now we can get a puller on this flywheel. This flywheel doesn't have a hole in the end of the shaft, so the point on your puller has nowhere to go, and it's going to make it walk around. So you want to get one of these, either drill a hole in this shaft, or just take a small piece of bar stock and drill a hole in it for the point to go into. Hook it on here, find a spot where it hooks on, and the shaft of your puller is directly over top of the crank. I had it hooked on one spot and it was way off center. So we'll try it here. I have to turn it a little bit. Sometimes these are a handful for one person. Tighten that up. Now there's a trick to getting these off. You don't want to just tighten it up as tight as you can. Put some pressure on it. Then tap on it with a hammer. The shock will go into the taper and it should pop it apart. If it don't, just tighten it up a little more. Keep it up till it pops off. Sometimes they rust on pretty good. Now if you got a stubborn one like this, you might want to quit, put some penetrating oil in there and let that work in. You put too much pressure on your puller, you stand the risk of busting your flywheel and that would not be good. So I think I might throw some oil in there and let it set, start working on some other stuff on here. Be 
Be right back. Now we're going to let that set. I put some, uh, I found a product that's even better than WD-40. It's called PB Blaster. It's a catalyst penetrating oil that seems to work pretty good. I'm just going to fill this hole where the nut came from right full and let it seep down in there. We'll come back to that. I'm going to take the muffler off. I'll be right back. Okay, we got the muffler off. Now we'll take this heat shield off. For some reason, they have three washers stacked up there. Probably to keep that square for some reason. So little things like that you want to take note of when you put this thing back together. Next thing you want to take note of is where these two studs are sticking out that holds that heat shield on. Now let's pop this head off and see what that looks like. Okay, we got all the bolts loose. I left them in where they came from. This one up here, you remember, had the three washers on it. This one down here has a spacer on it under the head of the bolt. So we'll just make sure all that stays there. These weren't as tight as I thought they would be. I don't see an excessive amount of carbon buildup. There is some, and that you want to get rid of. Your engine, you'll be surprised how much better your engine will start and run without all this carbon build up on the cylinder head and the walls. So we'll just set that in the box just like it is for now. I want to turn this piston down and see what that cylinder looks like. Doesn't look bad. You need a couple boxes for parts. Okay, I got a rag and I wiped this cylinder out. I got the piston down as far as I can get it. And you can still see the original swirl marks from the hone when they honed the cylinder. So I'm hoping that the walls are going to be in good shape. I get the piston out of the way, I'll run a bore mic down it and mic it to see if it's uh, the same size all the way down. And uh, might throw some rings in this baby and do a valve job on it. I checked the compression before I started. I only had 50 pounds. The engine did run, had pretty good power as I drove the machine around the yard before I bought it. Uh, it did growl and grind a lot because <laughs> he told me it had a bad gear and it sure did. But uh, we're going to finish taking this apart and see what it looks like. Now one thing you do want to keep a close eye on are all these little rods exactly where they go on the carburetor because a lot of these arms have several different holes in them so you want to get a good look at them and see how them are hooked up make sure you see where these wires are hooked up that's loose I'm surprised it killed the engine but it's just tearing it apart I got a, I went down to, uh, well, a friend of mine calls it China Direct. It's a uh, Harbor Freight. And I, yes, I bought a Chinese tool. I bought an ultrasonic cleaner. And we're going to throw this carb in it and clean it up. Uh, the shop bought a big one. It's about two and a half foot long, about a foot wide, and about six, seven inches deep. One of the guys at the shop uh, couldn't get his power washer running. It sat at the shop up in this balcony for about two years with gas in it. I had stable in it, but it he couldn't get it started. Brought it back to the shop. We took the carburetor off. We took the plug out of the bottom of the float bowl, and we couldn't get the float bowl off of the carburetor. It was jammed on there somehow. 
So we just threw the whole thing in this thing and turned it on. Plain water, no soap or anything. And we let it bubble for about 15 minutes. About 10 minutes into the cleaning, I told him, I said, well, let me grab this strap wrench I got. We'll wrap it around the float bowl and turn it and see if it pops off. Went and got the strap wrench. By the time I got back, from that thing cleaning, the float bowl, uh, the cover, fell right off the carburetor. I mean, them cleaners are amazing on how well they work. When I throw this one in, I'll film it and let you see how well that thing really works. So I guess I'm going to pull the carburetor off and uh, try to get this flywheel off, see if that oil soaked in. I'll be back. Okay, I want to get a nice close-up of this carburetor and how the linkages are hooked so I don't have any problems when I go to put it back together. That pushes the choke closed and that opens it. Okay, let's pull her off, I guess. I think we'll film this so I... When we took his power washer apart, he had more gaskets in there that had to go back in that's just right. Now we'll unhook the choke. That's in the first hole, farthest from to the edge. This one hooks in, well, this one really curls in there. And the little spring hooks in a little hole right next to it. Carburetor don't really look, you know, it's got a little corrosion inside. The butterfly shafts are tight. That's a problem my father-in-law is having with his. The shafts are wearing out. And uh, he had to buy a new carburetor. We'll set that to the side. Flywheel still don't want to come off. It's being really stubborn. We'll just soak her down with some oil and let it set. We might as well spin this around, get the starter off and get it out of my way. This must be the wires from the uh, magneto inside. It generates the power for the charge in the battery. Okay. I have to use a wrench on that. I'll be back. I got the starter off. A little trick I used to do years ago, I, I don't much anymore. If you're afraid of forgetting where certain bolts go, put the bolts back in and just wrap a rubber band around them. You know, if it wants to cooperate. And that will hold the bolts in place. Or masking tape until you put it back together. Flywheel still don't want to come off. We're going to uh, take off the intake manifold and then I guess we'll take this bracket off that holds this mechanism for all the shafts that go to the carburetor and the springs so we don't bend any of those. You don't want to bend them. If that happens it actually changes the length and that, that screws up a lot of stuff so you want to be careful with these. We'll be back. Okay we got the intake off and the gasket. On this one we'll try the masking tape trick and tape them up hold them in place. If 
you don't do this all the time, there are a lot of parts in here and it's easy to forget where they go. So if you do that, don't worry about it. A lot of people do, they just don't tell you. I'll be back. We're going to take this bracket off next. Okay, we got the bracket unbolted. There is a big spring back in here that hooks to the governor arm up to the bracket for the acceleration of the engine. We want to take that off. That goes right there in that hole. There's only one hole there, so that shouldn't be a problem. Getting it back in there. We got to get this wire off of here. It's what kills the engine. Bend that little bracket up. Take that off. I think that part of the spring will leave on the governor arm. Now if we have to take this off, there's an easy way to adjust your governor when you get the entire engine put back together. And I'll show you how that works. Right now we're going to try to get this tiny little spring off of here and this arm. Again, the arm goes through that little, looks like a nylon bushing. There's one little hole for that tiny little spring to go into. That's out. Maybe I'll take the spring off of this. It hooks from the outside in and we'll hook it back on this bracket where it won't get lost. That's a little crankcase vent tube that goes to the carburetor. Sucks up all the blow-by. Well, I guess now we're just going to work on trying to get this flywheel off so we can crack this case apart. I left it sitting I left it sitting on the drive disc. I left that I tipped this. I left the drive disc on the bottom of the engine. Kind of makes a nice little stand. Sits there for you. You can spin the engine around to work on it. I guess that worked out even better than I thought it was going to. So I guess that's it for now. I'll work on that flywheel. Um, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. I got a lot of videos coming up for JNR Woodworking. That uh, special finish I made and uh, the way to fix your spray can so you don't lose your plug up your little nozzles. Um, I guess if you have any questions, if you missed something, drop me an email. It's jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. Subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what you think. I appreciate the input. And uh, until next time, work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you later.